be about the outline agreement. Okay. What is an outline agreement? Can anybody say? Hello? What is an outline agreement? Okay, what is an agreement in the first place? In sales? Yeah, agreement is obviously between two parties. You can have more than one party also. Let's have a problem. So, when you say agreement, you, you agree for certain terms and conditions. For example, you agree for uh, a special price or you agree for some specified quantity or you agree for a special, quantity, a special price for some agreed quantity over a period of time. So these are the in re, in our common layman uh, language or layman term we use the term called as contract. Okay. But in SAP we have two different um, classifications under the topic of outline agreement. So one is scheduling agreement, another one is uh, contract. Scheduling, actually both uh, scheduling agreements or contracts are uh, controlled by just item category. Okay, it is, it, there is not item category as well as the document type. There is not, a, not too much of configurations in that. So, uh, configurations are there, but uh, only on the document uh, type level as well as the item category level. So, uh, so let us first start with the scheduling agreement. When we say scheduling agreement, the name itself is explanatory. It is about scheduling. Okay. You are you are making some agreements regarding the scheduling of articles. So in the scheduling agreement, you say like, okay, I will buy you buy certain quantities from you for a period of time, but I will give you the schedules of whenever I need the good. For example, like uh, you have to raise, uh, send me the goods on uh, every first and fifteenth of every month okay, for next one year, which means automatically the system will uh, will be creating the deliveries on first of every month and fifteenth of every month. Okay. So in the scheduling agreement, the quantity and the date of delivery are very much specified. So in the schedule lines, you enter those lines. And when you create, uh, when, I mean you just create the lines, that's it. You need not create any uh, sales orders, I mean uh, sales orders with reference to that and go for delivery creation, not necessary. The each schedule and entry, that is your the date and the quantity is automatically picked up in the delivery run when the warehouse clerk runs the delivery, I mean delivery run for the day. Okay. So, Deliveries are automatically created okay, and automatically processed also. So, your manual intervention is almost nil um, when you create the scheduling agreement except. Okay. So, when you, uh, you create the scheduling agreement, enter the date and you just submit it. And if you make any changes at a later time, for example, initially you had agreed for 100, okay, you had made the first delivery also. Then suddenly customer says like, okay, I am impressed with the quality, so I want to add one more hundred to that. Okay. Then the additional quantity, or sometimes like you may say like I am disappointed with the quantity, so I might want to reduce the quantity. So the additional reduction of quantity in the scheduling agreement that are being uh, adjusted towards the undelivered schedule. Okay. So this is the schedule name category. As I said, that it is just here, another business transaction and another business type. Okay. So, let us go to sales and distribution, sales, scheduling agreement, okay, V831, that okay, is create. The document type used is DS. So, before getting into DS completely, so let us See what are all the parameters that differentiate DES from other documents. So, 
दी है बिल्डिंग डिजाइन Okay. Here there is something called as outline agreement messages. Outline agreement messages say that they carry out. If you enable the outline agreement messages here, they carry out the header and items for each sales order combination and check whether there is any contract or agreement existing for the sale. For example, we have created a, a contract for uh, customer A, okay. customer A for the article. 101 for the next 15 days or 20 days okay. so when you try to create a sales order without referencing the scheduling agreement or any contract and when you try to um, i mean the system automatically compares the header as well as the item with the existing contract and says like hey there is a contract existing outline agreement I and mean, existing for this combination do you want to Get into that, or you continue as a normal sales order. You will be getting that kind of message. If you want to get those kind of checks, you have to enable it here. And when you enable, I mean, when you enable this message, you can even what uh, ideally the system does is the system informs you that okay, it is there. Then you can just continue. I mean, if you have made up your mind to go with the contract at, at that point, okay. You can go into the list of contracts and choose the agreement from that. Okay, else you might want to have the choice of either going through or you just um, uh, discarding it and proceeding it as usual. Okay? So that is what it says. Check at first A and B. It just head check at the header level and item level. Okay? C and D. It means it check and if there is only one contract available for that particular. Uh, combination, then the system will automatically copy that. Okay. And E and F says like if any such combination is found, okay, then it will automatically take you to the list of contracts instead of giving you a choice. Okay. So that is why we normally do it in the either A or B, so that we can have our own choice of getting into the contract list or not. Okay. So for scheduling agreement, it's not enabled because you had agreed for the Specify date and quantity. The scheduling agreement is very much rampant in the manufacturing industry because the country, the companies, they, they are, they are like uh, when the company finds that there, there is a source for a supply of supply source who can uh, supply the materials at the regular time at the regular quantity, then they will be definitely relieved, okay, so, so they can concentrate into other activities. Scheduling agreement. Let me say T H N E S P two E zero one. Okay, valid from twenty seven zero eight two zero one one two thirty one twelve. I enter the material T H N E T one zero one. My target quantity is let's say one hundred pieces. It gives the item category L P M. So you see what L P M does. Slash N D O V seven. Scheduling agreement item. Okay. As usual, it is done for billing. That is delivery related billing. 
relevant for standard pricing. Standard pricing. It's not a delivery to all the It is almost the same as our standard TAN. Here it is nothing is there. So I go into the schedule line and I am setting up these schedules. In the schedule line you can have the list like um, four view of how much has been ordered and how much has been delivered till now. So, so let me take it as zero six zero nine two zero eleven. My order quantity is then I say after 15 days I want some more quantity 50 okay. then I say 15 11 2011 to 25 the system creates a schedule line I mean we create the schedule line for the system it is almost, in case of normal sales order, the system will automatically create a scheduled line based on the availability of materials. Okay. But in this case, we are specifying that this is going to be our scheduled line. So, I come back. So, 15, 9, 21, 9, and 15, 11. Save it. So now I take up the role of your delivery clerk. V A N E. That is the collective processing. Okay. My shipping point is thousand two hundred. Okay. I am working on the zero five zero nine to twelve zero nine two zero one one. Okay, I think that is narrowing down the size of the fit. Zero, zero, zero. Okay. okay, so what is our Slash in VA three two three zero zero five three. automatically pick the delivery that came under that range. Okay, so I select that and go to background. At least one order was blocked. Oh sorry. My document is open right now. Okay. 
difference you, can, you are going to see in the contract? Or what is the difference between scheduling agreement and the contract? Hello? <laughs> okay, in the scheduling agreement we gave the date and time. Whereas in contract, it is just an agreement and um, you you don't give any prior indication that you want so and so quantity and so and so date. Okay. You have made the contract for next one year. Okay. Which means up to 11 months, I may be dormant. Okay. I don't uh, take any action on the contract. But suddenly I wake up and say, okay, hey, my contract is on. So then I can say that... Uh, Okay, for the last two months, I can order the entire quantity. Okay. Or sometimes it happens like I have made the contract, okay, first month I do. Okay. Then uh, I go for, I mean, I use the contract in fifth month, okay. Then I can do it in tenth month, uh, so that, then in the last month. Okay. So, in the contract, the contract is between two parties, okay, the buyer and the seller who agree for certain periods, uh, certain conditions like either it is going to be a special price or you agree for certain quantity. If you can say like, okay, for first 1000 pieces I will give you a special price. Yeah. And, but uh, if you buy anything after that, it is going to be the normal price one. Okay. So if that is the way. And sometimes uh, the contracts are being carried out regularly in the retail business. Uh, so where they make the agreement saying that okay for next one year I'll be buying taking so and so and there is a I mean like uh, have anybody else tried this do you you have more you can have more than one ship to party uh, when you I mean in your partner determination which means in your customer master you can enter more than one ship to party or more to one, more than one bill to party payer. Had you ever tried entering more than one sold to party? Did anyone? You? Okay. So you had tried that. Okay. Okay. That's a valid thing. Okay. Sometimes it happens like when you are creating a contract, uh, you are creating on behalf of our uh, group of store. So let me say that I am a uh, retail chain or I am a uh, supermarket chain, okay, and uh, I have, uh, let me say, 100 stores with me, okay, so I am making a contract on behalf of them, which means I am signing the contract, but they also can take up, uh, give the benefits of the contract, which means they also can release the sales order with reference to that contract, okay, in such cases, uh, Obviously, the person who releases the contract must be a sold to party. Okay. Only the sold to party can raise the sales order. Okay. So, we may we can see that in the customer master, you can have only one sold to party. Okay. So, for to address this scenario only, SAP have defined a separate partner function called as AA. That is the contract uh, sold to party. Let us go to one customer, VD02. Okay. Go to sales data data. Partner function. So that is something called as AASB, sold to party for contract release. 